So we, uh, well, I could try and introduce you, but maybe you can, uh, I mean, maybe you can introduce no, yourself. No, what did you write down about myself? Well, I didn't write this down. Um, well, you, uh, you were in the jury once at this festival last year? Yeah. Last year. And uh, several films in competition. Really? More like you had the one about several. I think they, they exaggerated. You had one film <laughs> before in a, in a competition. Yeah. It was the one about a short documentary about after parties. Was that one in Go Short? Ooh. Yes, it was. It was, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're a documentary filmmaker... And tonight you have a premiere of your new film. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited. Yeah? Yeah. Nervous as well? I have people watching. Um, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm prepared, but then now I'm like blacked out. Congratulations in advance. When does it play? I think it's going to play at 10 tonight. Yeah, it's in the last of the program. I'm really happy that it's the last because I think the, it really fits the energy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit of a slower film, so people can really like go go to bed. And afterwards. what is the name of the film? It's called The Death of Darkness, The Dood van de Duisternis. You watched it, right? Yeah, I had the chance to see it today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. In the cinema? Uh, On the big screen? Yeah, it was a pretty big screen. It was a flat computer screen. It was not a laptop. Mm -hmm. So I really liked it. Yeah. Thank you for the film. And uh, yeah, so it premieres tonight. Yeah. yeah, the world premiere. Oh my God. So that's why it's really nice it's live. It, it adds something special. So this is a pre-talk like to your film. I mean, your audience that is watching this can't possibly have seen your film anywhere, right? No. No, okay. Oh, that's a good point. So, we what, should yeah, so not what can we talk about? What everything, can't? yeah. Well, for me, there's never a plot spoiler or a spoiler, actually, but other filmmakers may be thinking differently about it. Depends on the type of film. But about your film, because it's a, uh, maybe I can say a little thing about it. It's a short documentary about a place in Kenya that is on a moment of a very important transition. transition. Yeah. And this yeah. transition is the arrival of electricity. Mm -hmm. And we see in the film, we follow this cables of uh, electricity poles that are that are uh, uh, placed in the landscape and they they will slowly but surely they will arrive at this at this at this small village and they will have electricity um, and I was I was wondering because in the film you show this moment of transition but you don't show the actual transition well it's a kind of spoiler right but we don't care about no it's good I think yeah, it's, it's good, good. You, you, do, yeah. you tell that but there is this feeling of uh, I don't know it's like both it's a very ambiguous feeling of maybe optimistic and also a threat to what is already there. And how did you experience that, this, um, this, this arrival of electricity? Well, I, I have that ambiguous feeling myself. Mm -hmm. um, and there I had the feeling that people didn't know what was going to happen. So they were just letting it happen to them. Mm -hmm. um, and... I think there, personally, there's a very big need for films to tell about, like warn about the problems of, of Western civilization and bring them to developing countries. Um, and uh, there I just witnessed, um, they were really excited to get light, but also didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So they were also asking me a lot of questions and they thought actually I was going to bring the light. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm like a representative of uh. Uh, the power almost. And I also I came with the electricians yeah. very often and I was communicating with them um, because how I found this village was through authorities. Like I went to the uh, Ministry of Kenya and I... I waited for hours in their office or in their hallway and I just wanted to know like what locations were going to get powered and I, I lo was looking for a couple on the map um, mm. looking I was looking for a community because you knew I, I think you I mean you, I think you researched and you knew that this was happening yeah. in this area of Kenya and then you on the spot in during your travel there you you got the specific place for the first time yes uh. yeah and um, 
there was not much of a village happening, so I was just looking at some little signals of what um, are yeah, steps of development that are not necessarily positive. Uh, what is their culture? Like, what is their deep, deep culture? And how will electricity change uh, their culture? And um, I find it interesting that culture is being lost and the development that I th first thought was called modernization is actually called westernization. Mm -hmm. So um, the people I met there and also especially actually in the city, the people that reflect a bit better about what's happening in their country, um, they call it westernization. And I guess you they don't see call it film. modernization. No, no. So even this uh, perhaps like fundamental thing that is electricity is considered westernization and not modernization. Yeah, because of all the implications. Yeah. Like the house building, usually they make the women build the houses from sticks and they use a, a round shape. Um, and now they don't have the knowledge to build with new materials to make the house uh, prepped for electricity, like conform the uh, safety rules. Mm -hmm. So instead of them being teached, you know, g getting the knowledge of how to build with the new materials in their own style, they have to have people come from abroad to uh, bring the materials and bring the... So the houses now are like square and they're, they're like Western oh, houses yeah. in a way. And it seems like a pretty big like technological leap as well. The town is called Ilaut, is it? So I checked it on, on the satellite, on the, on the maps, and there is not much there, if I saw correctly. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty harsh environment, how it yeah. looked like. And um, yeah, definitely this kind of, uh, I suppose, colonialistic or post-colonialistic uh, thoughts come to mind when you are looking at what is going on there. And, uh, well, this, there is these doubts, there's these hopes, also what could, can, can it bring, and there are some fears in the film. I really enjoy it. It's, uh, it's about a half an hour watch, mm -hmm. and as you said at the start, like kind of slow, but uh, very captivating, very beautiful film. And there's a beautiful, uh, it was my favorite scene, a beautiful scene of a group of women, I think, and they're all dressed in their traditional uh, clothing, and they're under a beautiful starry sky with no lights or just a fire and they are discussing what this arrival of electricity could mean but they're all kind of guessing because they all mm -hmm. don't have a real experience with uh, with electricity so they're mm -hmm. kind of wondering about the implications of, of having electricity but what how was it for you to capture these moments because you don't speak the language I suppose so how does this work you you recorded this whole evening and then sat down later. I mean, how yeah, does we translated a lot of material. Yeah. And in the sound design, we um, we just moved some little things we captured and placed them in the right place. So mm. it's um, it's repositioning fake. the dialogue. Oh. Repositioning. It's yeah. called montage. <laughs> yeah. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, it was it was happening. So. There are mi there's actually so many scenes I filmed that are not in the film, and these are the moments, like the essence, in a way. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, how it did was you manage to be in in touch with this? Would you, for example, record a conversation during the night and then uh, listen to it with someone the next day, so you would, so you would, so you knew on the spot what you recorded the last day, or did you? find out way later how, how I mean it's uh, this language uh, barrier is, is quite a, mm -hmm. a thing so to work with. for instance one uh, question sometimes or a subject I ask I work with a translator mm -hmm. and um, I ask the translator if this if they've been talking about this subject and um, who knows the most about this subject there yeah. And it, usually it's like the eldest, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and I think with this scene specifically, then I ask this main woman that I'm communicating with via the translator, if she can ask this question to her group. 
So she asks, does anyone know what's happening in Ilaut? Because there are all these little settlements of Manyata's houses, yeah. mm-hmm. like around the, the town. So the news spreads like wildfire, you know. The uh, places around the town, they all know about Ilaut getting electricity. Um, and it's it's kind of a a thing now, like whether the women now want to be part of that town or just maintain their own life. And because, live without electricity. Yeah. yeah. But then they need to move yeah. also. And there are nomads, but still, like, settle, is it settling down or is yeah. it staying for the... So they're being enticed by the situation now. Yeah. And um, I thought there might be some discussion about it, you know, so I was just anticipating and waiting whether to see if women would reply like, yeah, I want to move there and uh, me and my husband are planning to get married and move there. Or, yeah. But th- those are not the answers I got. Uh, but I got other beautiful answers instead. Mm. But I suppose then like building new houses is relocating completely and, and that would probably change your life quite drastically, like apart from just having the electricity. Mm. I had one other like... Like uh, or I have one one uh, question now that you have made the film and and uh, I was thinking on a global scale like there is still v- very few like human beings on planet Earth that are like basically considered uncontacted like somewhere in in the Amazon and somewhere close to the close to Sri Lanka on these I- islands if I believe uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, the, like this is a big question of course like if we have as westerners i don't have electricity i didn't create something like that i I understand probably as little about it as somebody else uh, like a random person but um but there's this question like if we have healthcare or electricity or internet and so on should it be pushed to people who don't yet have that thing did you get some kind of insight on that or how do you feel about like should should that development be going on or maybe it cannot be even stopped but mm-hmm. it's still a big it's a, it's a big question to at least in my head it's a big question to to mm-hmm. consider um i think things are happening very fast a bit too fast so um a lot of uh knowledge is being is getting lost because of fast transitions um the books that the people are reading of of these people yeah the tribes that you're mentioning the indigenous or the minorities in the world um they're not reading books that are written by people of their culture um so it's already you can you can just question like who is telling me what i should learn or what i should do and what does it does it benefit them um you know so you could you could trace back the power and also the money, like who paid for this book and who, um, and through that you can actually see if it's if it's the essence. But I I also one of the questions that really still touches me today, and I I think I could make more films about it is like what is the essence, and um, like intellectualizing our minds is not the essence um i think we should not think superior like of ourselves compared to these other uh, people in that can live in the wildlife um i i've experienced a different kind of um uh, adulthood with the boys that are 18 you know they are they are knowledgeable in a really different way than the boys are knowledgeable here the city boys Versus the yeah the wildlife boys. It was very different than hanging out with the the hipsters at the after parties that I saw in your previous documentary. I yeah. suppose yeah. Yeah, crazy difference. Crazy difference. Yeah, yeah. Also, I wanted. To, I'm wondering. I mean, this is in a way probably the first uh, public uh, Q and A or conversation you're having about this film, right? I think. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It is. I've been talking on some podcasts also. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 when, uh, like, from my own experience, I, uh, you know, you, 
you make a film and you go to film festivals and you have different Q and A's about the piece, and then along the way you you learn better and better how to answer these questions, and you actually learn how to talk about the film. I mean, uh, that's how I feel about it. You know, through all these Q and A's, and mm -hmm. after a while, uh, I mean, some questions return, and you have in a way your story ready. I'm uh, still stumbling. No, I think okay. you're doing yeah, we great. Have, we have caught you in a good place. Yeah. 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 But, but I'm it, but I'm also it's true, it distills down to something that keeps coming up. And maybe also after you are done with the project, it sometimes takes a while to get out of the fog. And and after that you see it yourself clearly. Yeah, but also I mean after a while you really learn from all these uh conversations and you can talk about the project uh, uh sometimes very clearly you know after all these experiences but i was wondering because uh, on, on on the on the starting point you know when you're going to the first film festival which is this one i also like uh, i wonder like what 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 would questions be you know and mm -hmm. i kind of try to prepare the answers to questions that i don't yet know that yeah. will be asked yeah but what is uh also you guys are planting seeds now with whatever stories are like the story of my film that I should yeah but I, I, I was <laughs> build upon. I, 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 I was wondering if what questions you were are imagining uh, getting f about this film when you're in a Q&A just you know later tonight mm -hmm. that you secretly prepared and you don't have to answer honestly mm. but did you or or maybe questions that you're a bit scared of getting um well, of course, it's it's the whole debate now about m people from a different culture or especially the people with more power making a movie about people mm -hmm. that don't have power. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Dutch-Chinese features I have and then I'm shooting a film in Kenya. So it's mm -hmm. it can be that can be also a, a, a very superficial in a way. Uh, discussion. Um, so it would be interesting if you would be confronted with this fact in a question. Mm, sometimes. I just expect that because it's you a topic. It? Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, mm, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> but that's moment. that is a good point you bring up as well. That that then have has it turned from like, is this westernization by bringing the electricity there? Is it now filmmaker tourism to go like make a film and feel good about it as well? It is, yeah. it is definitely part of it and good to be aware of that. We will uh, celebrate th this uh, premiere. Time to celebrate. Alcohol free, alcohol free celebration. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is a bar after all, you know? Look. I mean, I, 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 I didn't put this here, and I think it was the only reason it, this was put here was because of your premiere. I'm pretty oh. sure. This is your premiere it's first our Dutch opening. Culture. I love Where's it. the camera? <laughs> um, Dawa says he has never drink, uh, worked at a bar, actually. Might, no, have, I never might have had a drink in a bar. Oh! <laughs> Yay! But it's going swell so far. Yeah, I'm just here. Oh, no. It's alcohol free, don't worry. Nice. So. Thank you. And beer glasses. There you go, Pekka. But, yeah, Thank I think you I will much. get a lot of questions about uh, the what I've been researching and um, how my big philosophical topics maybe connect to the things I found and how um, the I found the community, for instance. So a lot about the process, um, but there, I would also love to talk more about the the background research about um, we the can't influence really of the talk moon. More because no. I just got the signal that we have to kind of go to the next segment. But first, already, so first cheers to your film, yes. to your premiere. Yeah, congratulations, congratulations. Cheers, cheers. And. Um, hmm. <laughs> apple juice mm -hmm. and uh no and then because we have to uh transition into a segment that is um uh, something happening in the other hall but in the meantime we're, we will listen to some music that you send me okay that is connected to the film can you say a small thing about it which one are you it's doing the logo? one the last one did you, yeah yeah exactly that one the one that you know the, the one that you send on uh on whatsapp, on WhatsApp. yeah um 
Oh, we are. What did we just listen to? We listened to Lamarty Lodo, and it's also with uh, featuring um, uh, Saningo. So there are two Samburu artists. Um, I wanted to bring the music to Go Short because it's very unique piece. I mean, I listen to Western music more. Um, but this is uh, music that I've been hearing over and over and over in Elout. Uh, mm. People play it on their mobile phones and they also send the file to other people. And that's how also the artists release songs is by like sharing the file with friends. Like I shared the other file with you. <laughs> they send it to each other on WhatsApp yeah. or what yeah. do they use? Do you... So the, the video on, on YouTube has like maybe 400 views, I think, this song. Uh, yeah. But seriously, I know it's been played so often in, in uh, Ilaut. So oh, it's wow. it's a, a real tribal uh, their culture song yeah um i also love the video clips that the people are making because it's kind of street urban video clip style um you know standing like this and really proud but then they're on a rock and there's a cow walking in the background and they're really epic drone shots mm -hmm. and you just see like desert um and they're like with their hands up in the air uh nice yeah so definitely already some Western like influence there, or or so is, it, yeah, is, it, or is it universal to to do that? To do this, yeah, yeah <laughs> perhaps. Yeah. Hey, how long did you uh, did you uh, stay there for to make all of this? Um, I I went and left a couple of times, in total mm. a half a year. Yeah, so th I didn't spend an entire period there waiting for electricity to come. I um, did research, went back, I shot the movie, I went back, I decided I didn't shoot the whole movie, I needed to go back to shoot more, <laughs> I went again, um, and then I went just with a sound man, so I think about six months, yeah. Because I noticed in, it was the, tough. in the credits that you work with a camera, uh, camera man, and you did second camera, right? Yeah. So you like were additional additional camera, but were you together with the camera or, uh, man all the time, or did you spend some time there as well filming just by yourself? Yes, I did. Ah, okay. Yeah. How can we? I mean, I was differentiate. already differentiate. Yeah, yeah, differentiate the shots that you took. Hmm. I don't know. I could could have put like some little stars in the post production no, 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 in no, no, a no. top right <laughs> corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. No, I was just, you know, I always look at these things in the credits, like, ah, the director filmed uh, herself. And and then I was wondering, you know, what kind of shots were the shot by the DOP? Well, my yeah. pans were quite stable, so you're not able to tell which ones are. No, no yeah. but it's a good, it's a, uh, you know, it's great if they don't uh, mm -hmm. you know, look uh, apart so much, right? Um, we have the second It was piece. budget also, that I didn't bring the cameraman for the second shoot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. but I also wanted to refer to earlier when, when there was the discussion about moving the sound around because you wouldn't understand immediately what was being said. Yeah. But even when you understand, I don't know how your filmmaking goes, but it's not always obvious what ends up in the final film. And also some favorites always get left out. Yeah. So even when you speak the language, if you have full understanding, it can be very hard to tell yeah. what makes the final cut. And, and it's easy to record hours of talking. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like one of my films, I think uh, we estimated uh, that about 95% was just cut and it was all hard work. And yeah. and no, not many people will ever get to see those things. So I, I think like you traveling back and forth there, I think it might change over time, maybe the ideas as well, or where is this going, or what is maybe missing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We if have, you, if um, you... or was it a question? Well, it was also a question. Oh, to, yeah. to oh, like, did it, like, how did it get forged over time? You took a took a decent amount of time to to work on this. So, yeah. like, was the second or or trip, for example, like, did you already have more plan of what what you were missing? We have time for a short answer and then we'll go to the other piece of music. I went through a lot of phases. I even had a f version with a voice over myself. Mm. So um, I was the narrator and uh, just tried everything. <laughs> yeah. What can you tell about the other piece of music that you brought? So the one that we're listening to. 
No, no, we ju no, not the We're one we just listen listened to. We're going to listen to the other one. Um, so these are uh, Nairobi artists. The other one was Samburu. This is Nairobi. Yeah. Um, I met them. I shot some footage with them. I'm going to make a video clip for them. Oh, cool. Yeah, and they're super excited because uh, they believe it's it's already such a good status thing for them to have a Western filmmaker on their project. So... I there think it's extremely supportive. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But what is, is it this track that you're making a music video for? Yeah. Yeah? D this specific song? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go.